The main body of the canister is made up of 10 sides as well as a plywood bottom. Now the individual sides are joined together with beveled edges, much like the staves in a barrel. But before you get to cutting those beveled edges, there are a few other steps you need to take care of. The first is to take the individual staves and cut them to final length. You're gonna leave them a little extra wide for now. Then you'll head over to the router table and use a straight bit to cut a small rabbit on the inside lower edge of all the staves. That's gonna hold the plywood bottom. Then you can go over to the table saw. There you'll tilt the table saw blade 18 degrees and then cut a bevel along one edge. Then you'll adjust the rip fence, turn the piece around and cut a bevel on the other edge which brings the parts to their final width. Once you have that done, you'll have your individual staves, but we decided to dress up the canisters a little bit by adding a series of graduated dots that are inlaid into the sides. This is a two-part process. The first part is to drill the recesses in each of the staves. I did that with a Forstner bit at the drill press. What you wanna do here is to clamp a stop block to the fence of the drill press so that the holes are gonna be symmetrical from each end of the piece. Then staying at the drill press, you'll switch to a plug cutter to create the individual plugs that will fit into the holes in the staves. After gluing in the inlaid dots, I trimmed most of the waste away with a handsaw. It doesn't have to be perfectly flush at this point. I just wanna knock down most of it because we're gonna clean it up a little bit later on. The real challenge here is gluing up a 10-sided assembly because you're not gonna be able to use your standard bar or pipe clamps. The solution that I like to do is to arrange all of the pieces against a straight edge that I've clamped to my workbench. The real key here is making sure that the rabbits on all the parts are in the same direction along this one edge or the other, otherwise your canister is just not gonna turn out. To hold the pieces together, I'm using individual strips of masking tape. So what you wanna do is just hold the two parts firmly together and then apply tape to span that joint line. Then I can flip the whole thing over very carefully. Now I can apply glue to the joint faces. This is one of those instances where you don't want to use too much glue because you don't want to get a lot of squeeze out because trying to clean it out on the inside of the canister is going to be a bear. So you just grab the two edges, roll the canister up, and then I'm gonna take one final piece of tape, bring the pieces together, and press the tape across the joint. Now it's just a matter of waiting for the glue to dry, and then we can round off the canister. Our canister is really starting to take shape now. The next step is to transform it from a 10-sided assembly into a perfectly round one. To do that, we're using a jig and a pretty fun technique here at the router table. Now, at its essence, the jig is basically an axle that suspends the canister above a router bit so that you can shave away the facets and create a smooth, even form. The jig itself is simple to make. There are a pair of L-shaped plywood brackets, one on each end, and those are joined by a pair of plywood rails. A little path between those two rails allows the bit to pass through as you slide it back and forth. To corral the canister, there are a pair of plywood discs on each end of the axle. There's a smaller one on the inside to center the canister, and then two larger ones fix it in place with a nut and a washer. The final thing to add are a pair of guide rails that you'll attach to the router table and creates a nice smooth path as you round off the canister. A bowl and tray bit works great for removing the material. Raise the bit high enough to clean up the surface. The rounded corners leave smooth, tear-out-free surfaces. Then it's a matter of sliding the jig forward slightly 
and rotating the canister across the bit. You repeat this process until you've routed the entire canister smooth and round. With just a little bit of sanding, you can see that the canister really is starting to look pretty great. What we need to do now is make the bottom for it. Now, earlier I said plywood bottom, but I wanted to match the outside of the canister to the bottom, so I glued up a piece of mahogany and planed it down to match the size of the rabbit. The trick here in cutting out the bottom is that the inside of the canister is still faceted, as is the rabbit. So what you're gonna have to do is set your canister on the bottom and then with a sharp pencil, get way down in there so that you're marking at the corners of the rabbit all the way around. Now I can take this over to the bandsaw and cut it out. When cutting out the bottom, take care to saw as close to the layout line as you can. That's gonna minimize the amount of sanding it takes to get the bottom to fit in the canister. You know, Chris, usually when we talk about cutting threads, we're talking about tapping a die, and that's usually metalworking. And we're talking about woodworking threads, we're talking about a tap box and a die for those, but that's not what we have here. No, what we have here is both a tap and a die. Yeah, and it's, it's designed to use your router to create threads, which I think is really cool. So kind of walk us through how, how this works and what are the different parts, because they all work together in sync. They do. First off, we're gonna start with this platen, and this is where you attach your workpiece to. That, in turn, has a shaft. In this case, it's a piece of 1-5 all thread. Now, we're not locked into using all thread here, of that size. We can use half inch, one inch, two inch, whatever you can fit in this jig. This little dowel here engages the threads and that sets the pitch. So this piece of threaded rod governs our entire threading process. Exactly, then on the back side we have a router and that's actually what does the cutting to make our threads in whatever our workpiece is. Mm -hmm. And that has a little bit of adjustability too, right? It does. Okay, the router is held in this jig and we can move the router just a little bit to angle it so that we can emulate the pitch angle of our threaded rod. We can adjust the router up, and we can adjust this whole carriage front to back, depending on the size of the project that you might want to use in here. The heart of this is this bit here, and this is a 90 degree double bevel metal cutting bit. But it works just great for cutting wooden threads. It's got very little rake to the teeth, so it makes a beautiful smooth cut. One thing I think is really cool is you can cut threads on projects of almost any size on this thing. I mean, as long as you can hold it to the platen, you can cut threads. It doesn't matter if it's our smaller canisters, you can go bigger with them, you can go smaller with them. Absolutely, you can go teeny tiny, or if you wanna redesign this jig, you can make a canister that big. So you're not limited to our project, which is these canisters. Any project you can think of that you can fit on this platen, it's good to go. To begin the threading process of the canister that Phil made earlier, I've begun by attaching it to this platen. The platen, in turn, is attached to a piece of threaded rod. That threaded rod guides the router and guides our canister and determines the threads per inch that we're going to cut. Now, this is a piece of 1-5 Acme rod. So it's one inch in diameter, five threads per inch. And what that means is, with this piece of dowel engaging these threads, as I turn the platen and the canister, the canister is going to advance or retreat at the rate of five turns to one inch of travel. Our router jig can accommodate different sizes of threads. And right now, of course, I have it set for a one inch Acme rod. Now moving over here to the router, the router is set at a very slight angle. Now, if you look at the Acme thread, you'll notice that all threads like this have a slight pitch angle to them. And so the router in turn is angled very slightly so that our router bit will cut true to the angle of the threads. The router jig also slides forward and backwards. And that means I can set this 
for different diameters of cut if I need to make something small or something large. Before I get started, you'll notice I've made a pencil mark three quarters of an inch on the interior of this canister, and that's my reference to know how deep to go. I know that the plug that I'm going to thread into this is three quarters of an inch deep, so that's how deep I've made my mark. And so when I start advancing into the router bit, I'll go all the way to that line and a little bit more. Now it's important when you cut threads not to take too big of a bite. I'm going to plan on starting light and probably going three times to get the good, stout, deep threads. But we go a little bit at a time. This router bit doesn't really have a tendency to grab. So I can go very slowly and carefully. But we always want to keep our part moving so we don't get any burn marks. So with that set, I'm going to start the router and begin the process. With the router turned on, I'm now going to advance the canister into the bit. Slowly and steadily, advancing and advancing until I reach that three quarters of an inch line on the interior. When I've reached that line, I'm going to reverse direction and back the canister out. I'll then shut the router off, loosen the knobs underneath the router carriage, and move the router carriage a little bit so that I have a slightly deeper cut. I'll repeat the process and then do it a third time, leaving well-cut, stout wooden threads. With the canister removed from the platen, my next step is going to be to take some sandpaper and I want to ease the entry into the threads. And I also want to take the sharp peak off the top of the threads, so they'll be a little bit stronger that way. When I'm done with that, I'm going to set up the router jig again, and we're going to cut threads on the plug. Well, with the threads completed in our canister, it's time to cut the threads in the plug that's going to be part of the top for our project. I'm using the same platen and the same 1-5 all thread. Now, by using the same all thread, I know that the threads are going to match exactly in pitch. The plug is attached to the platen with a spacer in between. And why the spacer? Well, that allows me to run threads through the entire thickness of the plug without the router bit hitting the platen. Now, when we cut threads for the canister, I was rotating the canister in opposition to the rotation of the router bit. That's how we would normally go through any routing operation on a router table. With the plug, I'm actually going to be rotating in the same direction as the router bit. So we need to be a little bit more careful about the router bit grabbing. I'm going to take light cuts and turn with a very steady hand. And I'm going to cut my threads in about three passes. Once I'm done with that, it's going to be time to remove the platen and the plug assembly. And we're going to do a test fit on our canister. So with that, let's go ahead and route some threads. Being careful so that the router bit doesn't grab, I'm going to start my cut fairly slowly, and I'm going to proceed with a little bit of caution. To cut the threads, I'll be doing it in three passes. After the threads are cut, I'll pull the whole platen assembly out and test fit our plug to the canister. If we need to cut a little deeper, the platen will be put back in, and we'll route one more time. Well, here's the finished plug for our canister project. It took me about five passes with the router jig to cut the threads in. The thing to remember is, check often. We want a just right fit, so you have to kind of sneak up on it. Well, with the plug completed, I'm going to turn this project over to Logan, and he's going to finish up with the lid for our canister. The last part of the puzzle on our threaded canisters is to build the lid. And the lid consists of three parts. The first is going to be that threaded plug that Chris just got done cutting. On top of that, we have a little bit bigger disc. And what the disc is going to be is that the actual top of our canister. This is going to be what's visible when the canister is completely closed. And finally, to wrap that up, we have a handle. Now, the handle is a little bit decorative, 
but it also gives you nice purchase to go ahead and unthread and open up the canister. Now, if there is ever a project of circles, this is it. We have circles for the lid, we have circles for almost every jig we have on this project. And we've shown a lot of ways to cut circles. You can use wing cutters or even hole saws, but this is the perfect opportunity to use your bandsaw with a circle cutting jig. A circle cutting jig is pretty simple and it allows you to cut circles nice and quickly. This one starts off with a hardwood runner and that runner simply rides in the miter slot of the bandsaw. On top of that, we have a platform. The platform has a hole drilled in it. And let me explain what the hole is for. And what that hole is gonna do is that hole is gonna hold this pivot pin. And this pivot pin is really the most integral part of this jig. And the position of that pin is super important depending on what size circle we're cutting. Now, while I'm at this, I'm gonna mention there's a hardwood runner back here. I've simply taped that down to the table, and that's gonna give me a nice positive stop when I push the sled in. And that is gonna designate where our hole is gonna be located for our pivot pin. You can see I've scribed a line that lines up with the front of the bandsaw blade. And that's where we want the center of our pin to be. And as far as how far from the blade we want that pin, that depends on what size circle we're cutting. This one in particular, I've sized this so it's gonna cut the top of our canister. So if you need to cut a smaller radius, you would simply move this hole in. If you need to cut a little bit bigger radius, such as those circles for the jigs, you just move that pin out a little bit, which is great because then you can really cut any size circle you need as long as your table's big enough. And if you need bigger circles, you can make a bigger table. So speaking about cutting, let's talk about how the cutting process works. On my blank, I've drilled a hole, and that hole's stopped because this is gonna become the top of our canister. We don't want that hole visible. And that hole is sized, so it will simply slip over that pin and allow me to feed the workpiece into the blade. Once the sled hits that stop point, I can go ahead and take my blank and I can pivot it around that pivot pin to cut the circle. Once the circle's completely cut, you wanna make sure you shut your bands off and let it spool down completely before you remove the waste and pull the circle off the pin. So as you can see, that circle cutting jig along with a sharp blade at your bandsaw really leaves a nice smooth edge on that circle. But if you do have any cleanup you have to do, go ahead and hold off because you're gonna wanna make sure you can thread on that lid onto your canister and then smooth everything nice and flush. Before I left the bandsaw, I went ahead and took that opportunity to saw out the handle for the canister lid also. And as you can see, we chose to use basswood here. That's the same that we used on the accents and it looks really nice. We included a pattern in the plans for the handle we used, but this is a good chance to maybe take some creative liberty and come up with a design that you really like. After we were done at the bandsaw, I went ahead and started to round over all the edges at the router table. And really there's four edges we're looking to round over here. Both the top and bottom side of the canister lid receives an eighth inch round over, and the top and bottom of the canister itself receive an eighth inch round over also. And this serves a couple purposes. The first is the bottom round over on the canister really makes it so when you slide it across the surface, you don't risk chipping out the bottom. The round over on the top and the canister lid really mask any discrepancies on the shape. And that leaves us to where we are right now. We're ready to start assembling the lid of our canister. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this handle to the canister lid. And we're gonna do that with a pair of screws through the bottom into the handle. Now, I'm not gonna glue this at all. That's because we want to allow these to move with however the wood's gonna move when it gains humidity or loses humidity. So we're gonna get a couple screws in there. Make sure we get those lined up. And especially with this basswood, you're gonna wanna make sure that you pre-drill those so you don't split out that handle. Okay, uh, that's on there. We can go ahead and get our plug attached. Now gluing two concentric circles together like our plug and our canister lid can be kind of a problem. 
If you don't get them lined up perfectly, when we thread our canister lid on, you're gonna have an offset on one side, and it's not gonna look very good. But, you remember those holes we use on the circle cutting guide? That makes the perfect place to slip in a little wooden dowel. And then we can use that to register the center holes. That way those two are perfectly aligned. So I'm gonna get some glue put on here. Give her a spin to spread the glue. Get a couple clamps. All right, now once that glue dries, your lid's pretty much done. You can take that opportunity to go ahead and thread it on the canister, check the fit, and do any fine tuning with some sandpaper to ease up those edges. Then, it's just a simple matter, choosing which finish you want to put on there. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy to download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. All fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.